these technology screens. Uh, we're going to be doing a meter test to show exactly how much light we have in the environment and also two against uh, four certified screens. I think we have elite screens, DMP supernova, a daylight, and I think that's it right now. So I'm going to show you right now. This is the uh, where my meter is sitting at. We don't have it anywhere near in front of the projector because uh, my projector is around 5,000 lumens, and I'm pretty sure it's going to hit my uh, my meter. And I'm going to keep it as far away from the meter as possible so that our measurements are accurate. So we have our overhead light here. And I see we have some light there, some light coming down through there. And over you can see there's no shiny spots on the floor where we have the meter sitting at, so it's not sitting in any form of direct light coming from the window. We have it sitting in a dark area right over here. There's no light hitting there. If it was hitting there, then we would have an issue. The meter would jump because that light coming from the window, we have it sit right over here, nowhere near the projector. So we're going to do this again. Certified screens. I'm going to see which one of these screens of our screen can maintain its uh, color of level versus four certified screens. And there it is marked and rectored on my certified meter. All right. So let me go. I don't have any socks. I'm good. I'm not going to be in front of the screen anyway. That's what I love about having this meter now. I got evidence data now. I'm actually building, uh, transferring this data over to the to a website where we can basically go in and basically keep track of our records. Now we have it on record that see if our screen can maintain color and an environment that is going to be using. Whoa, shoot, that sucker just jumped way up there. Look at this. I told you my room is very, very, very well lit. That thing is climbing. It is climbing. We're way beyond 220. We're up there now, 700, 753. I knew when I was doing these demonstrations in this environment, I knew these rooms were generating a lot of light. I mean, look at this. Look how well lit this area is. So I knew this room was generating some light. I just didn't know how much light it was. So now I got an accurate reading on exactly how much light we're in here. Almost 700 lux in this room. So let's see. Our technology versus certified technology to see which one of these screens can maintain an image in a fully lit environment. As I said before, you know, you can't do a demonstration by saying, oh, my screen hit like 2,000 lux or, or 2,200 lux, and your screen is washed out. Your screen still has to maintain that image. It has to be nice, it has to be bright, and it has to be beautiful. Oh, yeah, my, project, my uh, PS4 is in standby. These screens are way brighter than that. So anyway, you're going to have to be able to show, number one, your accurate counting in the environment by having a certified machine to do it. And number two, your screen has to maintain that color. It can't wash out, it can't fade. If not, it's considered to be a fail. So that's why we're going to do color patterns. This is going to be a short, sweet video. We're not going to go into a whole lot of stuff. Just basically to see where the color levels lie at and have it on record. Now, we've done this before already, so I already know the outcome, but I still want to have it on record with the meter. These are videos that I'm going to be taking over to companies to say, hey, look, you know, screen innovation or, you know, daylight screens. This is your product. This is a certified piece of equipment. This is how much light we had in the environment. This is what my screen does. Your screen will meet this really color. And you can see the contrast levels are not pulling either. So let's go with first the... Our microphones have got, I keep forgetting my microphones attached. Um, clear, clear. White screen. Let's just tell me you have. There we go. Now, also, too, with us having an accurate reading of how much light is actually making contact with the screen right now in this environment, also, too, the theory that the technology we develop, dark technology, so dark you can't see the screen, would be virtually impossible. 
especially when we have an accurate reading of how much light we're using in this demonstration. Now, as you can see, our screen maintains a beautiful white level for technology that's very dark. Let's go over and switch over to a red screen. And there, as you can see, my technology on a red screen producing a nice bright red level. And let's check the meter again and we'll go back and keep checking the meter. We'll show you exactly where we're at. This light is going to fluctuate all the time. As long as we stay past a certain mark. Now, at nighttime, I know it's going to drop probably around 3 or somewhere around 3, sometimes 2. But in the morning time, I expect to have more lighting here. So I expect to be able to have the ability to produce, have much more light in the environment. So, like I said, in the morning time, we're expected to have high numbers. But as I said before in this demonstration, you have to do more than show that your screen can produce in a fully lit environment. You have to be able to prove that your screen can also, too, maintain color without washing out or fading. Okay. Let's do a slow color change out. That's a little easier for me. And again, I'll walk in front of the screen so I can show the color of my screen, how dark it is. That is how dark the screen is compared to the sample sheets we have up there. And we have a gunmetal screen up there, which we have the Elite screen, has a 0 0.9 gain. Uh, the uh, Parallax has a 0 0.8 gain. And we have a few other ones we're actually going to pull up and show you. The two highest gains on here right now are 0 0.9 and 0 0.8. So if these screens are traveling at 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, that means our gain level is way beyond theirs. Tell you something, I really like this meter. I'm gonna to have to go and do some research and pick up a few more. I saw these ones that had tripods connected to them. We need those for the backyard. Let's do a star field demonstration. There's our contrast levels right there. That's showing that with our contrast levels, where do we stand on the meter? Let's see. Go back and show you the distance of where my projector is sitting. My projector from it sits at the very end of the dining room, and that's around 15 feet. So now we're near six. This room is, the sun's coming up and it's in place. Right now, we got, we're, we're, when the sun starts coming up, this place gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. It's not, it hasn't peaked in this place yet. This place gets really bright. So that meter's gonna keep jumping, it's gonna keep climbing. All right. So you can see our screen is maintaining contrast levels with no problem in a fully lit environment. And it's de actually, it's dated. Ooh, we're getting up there. Let's go over to, let's see, we'll use, uh, um, need some more colors in here. I need the color green screen. There we are. So that means at a certain height, because I'm pretty sure when they do these certified screens, they have one of these meters in the room. I guarantee they probably have, they have to have one in there. They say exactly what, 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 what peak area that that screen's gonna pull off a good image. I'm pretty sure they got it all measured out. So they can't be anywhere in the number where I'm at right now because their screen's washing out on their screen. And we're way behind that whole two something mark, way over that. Put a lime green. All right, 
right, let's see what else we got on here. We can go through real quick. Let's go with, uh, let me see. Hmm. Purple screen. Oh, we got a bunch of colors with that one. All right, start off here. And mind, there's no excuse. It's a 5,000 lumen projector. There's no excuse about lumens. There's no excuse about colors. This is a Chrissy. Big companies know what Chrissy's are. So ain't like we're using, uh, not to put the projector in any way, but I'm not we're using ViewSonic or NEC. These are Chrissy projectors. So we got plenty enough power for them to be to perform well in this environment. Because the reason why people get more lumens for their projector, it's a deal with the fact that they're worrying about the screen washing out and they don't have enough, the screen's not bright enough. Well, we're at 5,000 lumens. So the fact that their screen is washing out and I fought with a 5,000 lumen projector and we're now at, let's see how much light we got on the meter. Let's see if we're jumping even higher. Where we stand at? So compared to that 22 or 2100, we, we're not even in this room yet. How much light generates in that room right there? 1800 generates in those rooms right there. We're not even in there yet. But yeah, there was a particular fellow who basically was bragging about his, his 22, 221 of brightness. That's not bright. I got Disney flashlights brighter than that. My bathroom is brighter than that. And you had light. You had light physically hitting, this, hitting the, uh, the meter. Which means this meter tests are actually invalid because you're not supposed to have any physical light in contact with that meter. That meter is supposed to stand alone away from the screen and everything else. It's supposed to measure the light in the environment. So that was a fail. We need to do that one again. And if he got that two, if he got the 222 with the lights hitting it, Oh, how much worse is going to be if you remove the lights? It's probably going to be much, it's probably, going to be probably around 80. I say I give it about 80. All right, let's go from here. Um, let's, uh, we've got blues. We did the slow change out. We did the white levels. Let's do some gray. I think the part that people miss if we get these meters, what they don't understand is that if you're going to be displaying a screen, you're not only going to display the data showing that your screen is actually pouring in and dealing with that kind of light, but your screen must maintain a perfect image. I can't express that enough. You can't have any washed out areas in the screen. Like on my screen, say if all this was gray here and this was all washed out here, that's a fail. That screen must show an image as you're seeing from gray from corner to corner. That's how it has to display. And if your screen can't pick up that contrast level, I'm not dressed for today, can't pick up that contrast level, then you're not going to need to pick it up at all, period. In other words, in the same way that it's being displayed in the video application, it's the same way it must look on your screen without discoloration. Exert. Four K demonstration. Same way. When you look at an OLED demonstration on your cell phone, you see a black background, don't you? Nice, beautiful colors. If your screen can't display that, then that's an automatic fail. Just in case, if you feel that you're not close enough to the screen, I'll bring you in a little closer. There you go. So, here's my 
my standards. My standards are that screens should be able to produce an image in a fully lit environment at at least 400 lux. Anything below that, not worth the time. And this should be in daytime hours. In daytime hours, you should at least be to hit 400. At nighttime, you're probably roughly gonna hit probably around, we can hit maybe three. If I'm in front of the screen, maybe about under two. But still at the same time, while we're hitting under two, we can wash out screens at the same time. Which means your screen is actually cannot produce in 222. It actually produces lower than that. Because we're able to wash it out at 160. That means you're probably coming in at a perfect, an, Im an image that is acceptable, probably around 80. And mind you, this isn't screen paint. These are certifieds. There's no screen paint mix. This is a certified projection screen for doing this test on. And I have yet to see him do the test. Tomorrow, we'll do 11 certifieds, all at the same time. Environment on the screen won't survive. Let me show you something real quick. I'm gonna go over to um, let me see. Let's pick up this demonstration right here. I like the bright resin here. Now watch the demonstration. As I said before, you have to maintain your levels. The colors have to be red, they have to be blue, they have to be green, they can't be washing out or fading to the screen whatsoever. You have to be to maintain. Let's check our settings real quick. Let's see where we're at on the meter. So if your image washes out, that is a complete fail. It has to maintain the same image from corner to corner. That's when I watch demonstrations that people have all this washed out, all that washed out, and they got this faded image in the middle and goes, look, you can see the screen. That's not acceptable. Now, as you can see, where my meter is sitting, there's nothing here to manipulate in any way whatsoever. The light coming through the window is hitting there. My sensor is right there. And it's actually right near my projector. I don't have it sitting in the front. I don't put them in the front because like I said, the problem you have is that if you lumens from your projector are gonna hit that regardless. Even if it's just hitting the screen, you're still gonna get some, uh, some of the lumens are gonna come down a little bit farther. You ever hit a projection screen at nighttime, you got this white uh, image around the screen. So if your screen is pushing off light and it's not absorbing it, that white light has to go somewhere. And sometimes it bounces up on the ceiling, it bounces up on the walls, or it's bouncing right on that meter too. That's why you don't have to, the meter should be nowhere near the screen at any time. It needs to be away from the screen. And most likely, it should be behind the back, it should be behind the projector. So that way it shows that it's only reading the light in the environment only, nothing more, nothing less. I'm gonna show you how to properly use a meter. Not, you know who I'm talking about. You need to get rid of that cell phone app, get yourself an official unit machine. The base is way lower than 220. So let me get this straight. Our product, $224. It paints the screen size up to 126. And we have a screen that's 5,000, 3,000, 1,500, and I think that one's around five grand. BMP Supernova's are four to $5,000 screens. That is not a cheap screen to begin with. Contrast demonstration again. this LG Foods real quick. LG Food Demonstrations.
particular video I'm looking for. Told you. My environment generate 10 times more light than your environment. Easily. Very easily. There are nothing but windows in my house. That's one of the things I loved about when I moved here. When I saw how much light this house was generating, like, oh shoot. Oh, I wish I would have had this in the other house. We had the condensed lighting hitting the screen. That would have been nice to see. That would have been real nice to see. LG 4K food demonstrations. That's the fellow who basically is uh, has a contract with the company. See some intro video for the company? Beautiful, isn't it? I'll put a link down and you can check this out. Wait a minute. Yeah, check this out. Yeah. He has a contract with their company. And that's our technology right there being displayed. What was that again about the screens coming up too dark? I didn't think so. Mm -hmm. That's 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 a, um, a signature 17 on display. See where it says digital screen. Some see that? I should have him do our videos. See that right there? Talked all that trash about our screens kind of dark, right? That's a company right there who has our technology displaying it left and right. Digital cinema screens.
Actually, they signed two contracts with us. They signed one contract for covering up information you're not supposed to see. They signed one contract for the Phoenix technology, which they love so much. And then they turned around and they signed another contract for the Signature 17. Contracts, people. Right there. See, when your stuff works, you get contracts. When your stuff don't work, Nobody pays you any money. That's their commercials now. They're going to be posting up. And that's not the end of it because I got another big dog that popped up yesterday that saw the demonstration. He ordered paint that's coming his way. And he's got a lot of heavy ties. A lot of heavy ties. And he wants to see this technology in commercials and just about everything else. See? All that nonsense about how our technology comes up so dark you can't even see it. And here we have people out there, companies, doing demonstrations on our products and posting them on YouTube. Meanwhile, you got this guy sitting in his little apartment saying, oh, this is how their products come up. You just, you just outed yourself as the biggest fake on the fake of the planet. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Oh, and he bought a Lux meter too. He actually picked that one because they asked me where I got mine from. So they're going to be doing their meters. Got to get that sandwich. You can stay up there. won't stay up there. Let's see if we can get a little press on there a little more. Yeah. See that? I told him from the door that, you know, I sit there and tell you that my technology comes from God. Everything I design comes from God. And you want to run your mouth about me being a fake Christian and all this nonsense? Well, interesting that God continues to bless my hand. My technology just gets better and better and better and better. And anything you try to do, you fail at it. Don't you want to try to do a meter test? You see how my meter is kicking in? My meter is at a thousand right now. Hold on for a minute. Let's go look at this real quick. We're getting up there. Now here's my meter in here, bouncing back and forth, almost about to reach a thousand. And you barely made it on your meter with the light on top of the, of the meter to manipulate your readings. And you only got 221. Do you know how low that is? That's not even a real setting at 221. The fact that these screens can produce images outside with no problem. Do you have any idea how high the meter would be out there? So if this screen can read an image outside, what happens if they take the screen and they put it into a commercial environment that's going to have tons of light in there? The screen's going to be the survivor, no problem, because they got the data to back it up. Where he could barely pull that number in that dark apartment with that light hitting that screen, hitting that, uh, that meter, to try to boost his numbers. And once I get all the screens painted, with the, with the new technology, we can go into the next room because I can't wait to get in there. I can't wait. You see this window light? Oh, my goodness. If I put my meter right now on my sofa, not even in the window, on my sofa and tuck it in, I'm at 1,800 in that, in that Lux, in that one area. But remember, I'm supposed to be afraid to display my, uh, my numbers. No problem with that at all. But you know what? I had somebody come and tell me, oh, you don't know how to use a meter, buddy. Look up Dr. Meter. Look at the tutorial video on how to use it. It's that easy. You just press the button for Lux, and that's it, and it activates. That's all it does. Very easy. And they'll give you exactly the reading that you need to see. 
Je peux pas. And if you're going to talk about being accurate, well, his meter reading isn't certified. It's a cell phone app, probably from a third party. Who knows? I like this. I love this. I love it. And guess what? You know something? They're not using 4K projectors. They're only using 1080p projectors for the demonstration. You know why? Because they want to get it out there that you don't have to spend all this money for these overpriced projectors. Much like the big companies do. All right. By the way, Jamie, you can't find that video anywhere. You know why? They made that video. That's their design. So if you don't got permission from them to touch it, they'll be paying you a visit soon with some paperwork. We can get our own content made for ourselves now. So instead of me going here and getting all this stuff, I can get my own content made for myself. Because you know, when you got connections with big companies, they give you hookups. So these videos, we can get customized for us. You can't touch them. Let's give you permission. This is why I say that when you do dirty tactics like this, it hurts you. These are companies that know who you are. And companies talk. And like I said, after a while, no one's going to touch you with a 10-foot pole when they get done with you. No, no, don't go near him. Uh-uh, no. Mm. Look at the dirty stuff he does. Because they're using our product on the fact that you're campaigning about a product that comes up black. So you're talking about somebody who has it in their facility, using it, working with it every day. And you're doing demonstrations like that, deceitful demonstrations. No, they wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole. That's why you'll never get one of those gold contracts on the table. This was this was really embarrassing for you last night when that freaking total eclipse came over screen didn't even pick up no contrast level whatsoever let's see how the certifies do now, as i said before the screens we got up here they work perfectly fine and you couldn't begin to white screen but this is not a white screen it's a whole different kind of technology. They have never been against a screen like this, so. I'm pretty sure I get a few emails asking for samples and stuff like that, if they can test out and this, that, and the other. We're just seeing on the end how our technology stacks up to theirs in an official meter reading of light. Now I got an accurate, I'm not, I love this. I finally got an accurate reading of what's going on in my environment. Man, I am up there. So now when somebody watches a demonstration in my environment, like, wow, this is the guy who got freaking almost near 900 in one room. And this is each screen is still maintaining the image and all that light. Because now we have an accurate reading of it now. I had to thank Jamie for that one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Look, we didn't have credit on our ability to be able to master ambient light rejection. We got it now. Yep, here comes the eclipse. This is 
beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I just love this meter, man. Just having this meter here and being able to see exactly what I'm actually pulling in this room. I know it's bright in here, but good gracious. It's, oof. We're up there. Do one more. I don't want the video being too long. We're at 36, so that's good. You keep it at a certain level. I don't want to be too far up. Well, we got to do this one. See how amazing this contract level is though? And I know, I know you guys are, the Pete the Crow, they're hating. You've got to be hating. I don't mind that. They don't bother me. At the end of the day, my product's good. At the end of the day, I have contracts, and at the end of the day, I got orders. So they don't bother me at all, period. It just shows, like I said, when we get that kind of response, we do damage. And that's what this technology is doing, it's doing damage. Not only that, it's producing, look at the meter readings on this thing. Hold on, let's look at the meter readings on this. We are nowhere near 22, 2200 or 2100. We're not even in that ballpark. Way beyond that. Without the manipulation of light. So, I can come on camera and honestly say that my screen can sit in a fully lit environment with about 800 lux and still maintain a bright and beautiful image without washing out or fading versus four certified projection screens. All right then, people. With that being said, I'm done for today. Hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. Thank you for your time. I have to go and God bless.